Hello, this is The Interview on France 24. I'm Catherine Nicholson. Now with us today, we have the Foreign Minister of Moldova with a population of just over 2 million people. It's Ukraine's smallest neighbour, but uh, at the time of recording, at least 450,000 Ukrainians have crossed the border as refugees since the Russian invasion in February, and around 100,000 of them are still there. Now, since 1992, a mainly Russian-speaking part of Moldova called Transnistria has declared itself as an independent state, although this is unrecognised even by Russia. And it's believed that around 1,500 Russian troops are currently stationed in Transnistria. Now, Moldova is not a member of the European Union, but like in Ukraine, the current government is keen to join the bloc. Niku Popescu, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. So I'd like to start off uh, with, obviously, the, the war situation in your neighbour, Ukraine, and uh, the precarious situation geographically, perhaps diplomatically as well, that Moldova occupies. In recent months, there have been Russian separatists in Transnistria who've said that Ukraine was responsible for shootings, explosions, drone incursions as well in Transnistria. Is this a sign that Moldova could be drawn into the conflict? Well I would like to start by saying that, of course, this war uh, has generated a lot of insecurity for every single person living on the European continent. Uh, everyone is less secure. Of course, that applies to Moldova and our citizens. But we've been doing our best to keep peace on Moldovan territory. Of course, we have this uh, separatist region of Transnistria. But over the years, and in the last 30 years already, We've always been insisting uh, on the idea that the only way to manage our differences with this separatist region is through peaceful mm -hmm. dialogue, through diplomacy, and that, what, that is what we're trying to do now. Uh, and I, I must say that, of course, the situation is, is, is tense. Uh, we have uh, our neighbor Ukraine uh, facing uh, a, a large-scale uh, military aggression, a war, there have been bombings right next to our border of Odessa, of our other Ukrainian towns and villages. We're all affected. Uh, there has been and there is a high degree of nervosity uh, in Moldova, inside the Transnistrian region. All of that is true, but we're doing our best to talk mm -hmm. and to continue talking to the Transnistrian authorities to keep the situation stable. And there have been some explosions, but we're doing our best to keep the situation calm. And in our assessment, it's not Ukraine that is behind these bombings. It's, it's interests and people inside Transnistria who are trying to destabilize the situation. They are a minority because most of the residents of this region don't want to live in a war zone. Mm. Um, but nonetheless, of course, there is a degree of nervosity everywhere. Uh, well, a Russian military commander made some comments in April that indicated Russia is aiming to create the so-called land bridge uh, from eastern and southern Ukraine all the way across to Transnistria to join up. Uh, American intelligence has drawn the same conclusion. Do you agree with that assessment? So in our assessment, and that's an assessment that is shared by the United States and by the member states of the European Union, there is no immediate or imminent uh, threats of hostile military action uh, directed against Moldova. So, of course, the degree of insecurity in the region is high. Uh, uh, we are preparing for all the possible conting contingencies, for all possible scenarios, including negative scenarios with military implications and military threats. We've been planning for such scenarios since around November last year. Of course, this scenario that you mentioned is one of the scenarios that we are taking into account at mm -hmm. the same time. For the moment, uh, the situation is calm. We cannot predict how things will evolve, but for now, the situation is calm. Uh, well, the Spanish Prime Minister, Pedro Sanchez, he recently visited your country. He said Spain would stand up for Moldova's territorial integrity. Uh, what do you take that to mean? We've been through several very difficult months. Of course, I cannot compare uh, our difficulties with the tragedy and horror of what is happening and has been happening in Ukraine. Uh, at the same time, for us, it also has been quite difficult. Um, we had this huge wave of refugees. And, you know, if you look at the numbers, it's around 3% of our population. Mm -hmm. So it's the same as if in France, you would have almost two and a half million people mm -hmm. of refugees just coming in a matter of two, three weeks. So for us, the, the impact was huge. The shock was huge. Uh, psychological and social infrastructure, healthcare infrastructure, border mm -hmm. management, everything. 
uh, at the same time, uh, we've managed to stabilize the situation. We've ensured uh, peace, social stability, a, a dignified and calm uh, conditions for the refugees. And we've also done that thanks to the support, the amazing support we got from the member states of the European Union, from the UK, mm. from the US, Canada, Japan. And here Spain supported us, but France, uh, Germany, uh, everyone has really stood by Moldova. Romania is right next to mm -hmm. us, and we've we've received amazing degree of political, diplomatic, uh, and and humanitarian support from everyone. But then it's that question of uh, standing up for Moldova's in, uh, territorial integrity. You you just said before you don't see an in, imminent threat uh, from Russia trying to create that land bridge, but perhaps Pedro Sanchez does. No, I said not imminent and not immediate. So there's, there's these two elements. Uh, well, uh, all the countries with whom we engage in diplomatic uh, exchanges do recognize and as a matter of principles or always restate the fact that they recognize Moldova's territorial integrity mm -hmm. within the internationally recognized border and all of them think and claim and insist on the fact that the Transnistrian region is part of Moldova. Mm -hmm. So that was this normal reiteration of a long-standing uh, position. I don't read that as being uh, an expression of concern. Now, Moldova, not a member of NATO, has been keen to maintain a, a kind of neutrality. Recently, though, as you said, the European Union has given a lot of help uh, to Moldova, including uh, pledging to increase its military aid to your country. The UK's foreign secretary said that she thinks Moldova should be equipped to NATO standards. Now, is Moldova able to maintain a military neutrality in this context? So Moldova has been neutral by its constitution since 1994. However, and this neutrality refers to Moldova not taking sides in military conflicts. Uh, our neutrality does not mean demilitarization, does not mean safe self-isolation, not least when it comes to security cooperation with partners that support Moldova. And it does not mean indifference to breaches of international law, to military aggressions against our state. So, uh, yes, we're neutral, but we've been condemning since the first hours the Russian aggression against Ukraine. And we've been cooperating with many partners, with the United States, with the UK, with NATO, with EU member states, with France, uh, for many, many years. Uh, we have an interest in developing and fortifying and consolidating our capacity to defend our country. Our vision is that we want to see Moldova in the European Union mm -hmm. as a neutral state. And in the European Union, you have several countries that are neutral. You have Malta, Malta, Cyprus, Ireland, Austria, and of course, Finland and Sweden, which are now the time uh, being. joining, uh, you know, they launched the process of joining NATO. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, there's enough countries mm -hmm. that are neutral inside the EU. And that's our vision. We want to be in the EU and stay neutral. Well, speaking about Moldova's uh, EU ambitions, like Ukraine, as you said, uh, seeking to join the European Union, you have applied to join. Uh, Austria's Chancellor uh, recently, however, talked about an intermediate stage between cooperation agreements that currently exist and full membership of the European Union. Uh, is this a good idea from your point of view? Well, we want to join the European Union. That's absolutely clear. Uh, but we also realize it's going to take some time. So anything that brings Moldova closer to the European Union, to European institutions, standards, uh, is something that helps us uh, prepare for EU membership. So in this sense, uh, we are in favor of a standard track of accession to the European Union, a standard track that has been used by Spain, by Portugal, by Greece, mm -hmm. by Austria in uh, n quite recently, in the middle of the 90s by Finland, and of course by Central Eastern Europe. You know, that is what we want to do. And all additional initiatives, which mm. are complementary and are not an alternative to enlargement, are good initiatives that help us anchor our country in Europe. But you don't want to be kept in a kind of a, a secondary status that's been talked about by several EU leaders, we ought to say. Uh, well, no EU leader spoke of secondary, uh, uh, of, of a kind of... Uh, but a we different all kind of membership. No, no, I think... Here, we are pragmatic in the sense that we realize Moldova is not ready to join the European Union tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, Moldova needs to do a lot of homework. This homework will take time. Reforms will take time, making our country more prosperous, less corrupt, 
developing our infrastructure, education, healthcare will take time. Uh, so everything that helps us fast accelerate this pace of reforms is helpful. So all kinds of EU initiatives, assistance, reforms, platforms of cooperation in agriculture, in infrastructure, is something which is de facto accelerating our route mm. to Europe. And then, you know, whatever name you give it is, is a secondary matter to us. Um, just a bit of news from the last few days. Moldova, Moldova's strongly pro-Russian former president Igor Dodon, uh, currently under house arrest amid allegations of corruption and treason. Now, he says that this is politically motivated. Uh, can he be guaranteed a fair trial? Of course he can be guaranteed uh, a fair trial. He has to be guaranteed and he will be guaranteed a fair trial. Um, at the same time, any democracy needs properly functioning uh, political parties, political parties which are not subject to corruption. And this former president has been filmed receiving a bag uh, of something from an oligarch, and they are talking about the fact that in this bag you have cash. Uh, and you cannot build a democracy when uh, a president at the time is receiving uh, supposedly bags of cash from, from oligarchs. And that kind of uh, prosecution is something which is actually supposed to consolidate democracy and Moldova has been a democracy for 30 years. We have a long way to go to consolidate it, but we're a democracy and a democracy can only be based on clean party finance. Niku Popescu, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. And thanks to you for watching. Hope to see you again soon here on France 24.